this is Nadia from Addictive. Hi, Nadia. Hi, Igor. How's your day? Uh, it's good. It's good. How are you? Uh, just amazing. Enjoy the summer. Uh, actually, Thursday is my favorite day of the week, and it's going to be perfect no matter what. It's my mantra. <laughs> That's great. I was just about to answer, how's your summer going? <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and it seems it, uh, it's going really well. Uh, it's quite a busy summer. I don't even plan a vacation right now, but hope to visit my friends at Amsterdam and Berlin, if possible, at the at September. But yeah, summer is great itself. <laughs> well, yeah, um, at least um, we we have here uh, where in Saint Petersburg, where we are physically based, we have uh, the spirit of uh, the long uh, long days called White Nights, uh, like. That's why we are originally named White Knights, and um, that's nice. Just to even wor work uh, at this time of the year, you have a long day. You can do many great things. <laughs> yeah, indeed. I have struggles with uh, sleeping at night because it's lighter than it used to be at, at winter. <laughs> yeah, you need blind curtains uh, to have enough sleep. Indeed. Yeah. All right. So over to you right now. Uh, you can start with your presentation, and good luck. Uh, thank you, uh, and uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me today. Uh, I'm Nadia. I joined Addictive Team uh, at EMEA side, and I'm pretty excited to share this speech about retargeting benchmarks for gaming and specifically how it's possible to drive growth for games through re-engagement campaign. Uh, so uh, during this presentation, I will cover three main uh, pillars. Specifically, I'll talk about two main pain points that can be addressed, addressed through retargeting for gaming. Also, we'll share some most basic uh, use cases when it comes to re-engagement and, of course, share insights on gaming retargeting benchmarks on the basis of addictive performance with our partners. Lastly, I'll finish it off with our expectations and steps that we are going through right now to prepare ourselves for the changes that are coming with respect to uh, IDFA changes announced. To begin with, I'd like to make a quick intro of Addictive. So I'm really proud to be a part of tech-savvy team that provides a super sophisticated and awesome programmatic retargeting solution for all applications. Most of our partners are games, and we are really proud and excited to work with amazing players uh, of this vertical and be part of their success and contribute to their growth. It's also pretty exciting to be ranked by AppsFlyer to be in top five uh, partners for gaming programmatic retargeting. Another crucial point, which I really want to mention, is actually that Addictive is one of pioneers who introduced incrementality and incrementality measurement phenomenon to the retargeting to evaluate the performance and make it better. Lastly, we cover everything uh, for retargeting campaigns, starting from pre-launch analysis to understand what's going on and uh, suggest the best setup and, and strategies uh, to hit the partner's goal and finishing off with creating amazing designs because we are doing everything when it comes to creative work. Uh, Addictive has in-house creative studio and it's the funniest and uh, the most excite, uh, excited part of the uh, work with the campaign. So let's move on to two main reasons why it's so important to add re-engagement campaign to your marketing strategy. To begin with is actually problem of retentions. And of course, uh, it's crucial because uh, apps lose their installers within the very first day after initial install. Uh, when it comes to numbers, uh, classic games like uh, slots, casino, uh, show best retention performance. Of course, uh, role-playing, multiplaying, and strategy games also take the lead when it comes to retargeting. Uh, anyway, even top-performing games see day one retargeting varying between 35-50%. On day seven, it drops down to 15-25%. And... 
Uh, top performance shows only 4-6% retention on day 28. Obviously, a re-engagement campaign can address retention issue and those developers who uh, add retargeting campaign to their marketing strategy actually see 25-60% higher retention rates in comparison to those who don't do that. This brings us to the second pain point, actually revenue generation. Uh, again, casino, role-playing game strategy takes the lead and stand out with generating more revenue within the games. Uh, however, it's also difficult to convert users to become a payers and to make repurchases. And again, uh, as data is showing, uh, retargeting campaign allows to generate additional revenue uplift up to 30%. Of course, nothing works as magic and you need to invest your time resources to make correct setup and enjoy the fruits of re-engagement campaign, but numbers speak for themselves. You will receive good results from re-engagement. Specifically, right now, there are lots of channels through which you can re-engage your users and uh, actually adding such strategy to your marketing plan. It's a vital step to keep users engaged and generate upsell in revenue. And when you play with different channels, it allows you to expand the reach to your users and find right users at the right time. And of course, enjoy natural synergy of these channels and uh, get the optimal performance uh, through re-engagement. It's always cool to test different approaches, different channels, because it all ends up with better performance. So let's bring it on to discuss some retargeting use cases. Most obvious, most challenging one is reacquisition. Uh, sometimes uh, people tend to question the need to reacquire users because uh, budgets are spent to bring these users through user acquisition, but the ugly truth is that most users churn within seven days after the install. And when it comes for mature titles, it's specifically crucial to re-engage uh, lapsed users because they have huge pool of uh, valuable pairs that need to be bring back to the game and uh, reinforced with their interest and loyalty and of course triggered purchasing events with them. Uh, another problem with reacquisition is that the longer inactivity window is, the more difficult it is to bring back the user. Uh, secondly, retargeting is super good in terms of user activ activation. Basically, it means that you convert your non-payers to uh, make first purchase. And again, it's a common challenge for all developers to attract more players to the game and make them a payers. Uh, what we see is that on average, 40% uh, of uh, new installers make uh, first purchase uh, on the day after the, of the install and only less than 10% make first purchase on day seven. So it's crucial to re-engage those users that are pretty unlikely to convert to be payers organically. And uh, this way you are pushing them and triggering first purchase. And lastly, it's all about revenue generation and creating significant revenue uplift uh, by targeting existing payers and triggering repurchasers for them. Uh, this uh, strategy covers uh, all existing payers who made a purchase at least once and did not make a repurchase. And actually, uh, we see uh, that it's crucial to determine the right window during which uh, repurchase occurs because uh, uh, most repurchases happen within three days after prior purchase. And after three days, it becomes less likely for the user to make a repurchase again soon. So it makes sense to uh, target these users and uh, suggest them some in-game offering to trigger next purchase. Again, with retargeting campaign, you can cover both non-payers and payers user segments, but apply different strategies and different offerings to them. When it comes non-payers uh, within the game, it's crucial to target new installers and to keep them from churn as well as activating the first purchase. 
whereas when it comes to bears, it's crucial to bring back lapsed whales and dolphins to the game. Uh, it's super important to generate more purchases with ex existing bears and of course trigger some other actions within the game. Uh, what we also see that external cross promo also tends to be more and more popular within our gaming partners. And this is a really cool strategy that allows you to target historically lapsed players and transfer them from one mature title to a new one. So basically when user player is losing interest in one game, he's transferred to a new title. And this way, uh, in this way, all your users are kept in one ecosystem and their LTV is keep on growing. It's also very, very important to pay attention to setup of retargeting campaign. And the first advice, and uh, actually is that what we are proud of, is that you always must be data-driven and user insights driven. Uh, you need to collect as much information as possible, uh, analyze it layer by layer, understand it, and to go through user experience to uh, make right decisions on the campaign setup. It's particularly important to understand uh, drop off points, uh, at which stage active user suddenly becomes inactive. Uh, on the contrary, what behavioral patterns can trigger the purchase? It's very, very crucial. Uh, another point to mention is the use of deep links because they help to deliver a seamless journey for the user. And of course, uh, main key point is that uh, there must be a perfect match between uh, user segments you are targeting and in-game offers suggested to different type of players. You need to take uh, into account player type before suggesting them some, something. And uh, for a targeting to work the way you want it to work and for you to get the best of it, it's crucial to have dedicated and campaign-specific offer, a uh, good deal tied to every retargeting campaign. Okay, this brings us to retargeting benchmarks. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, the first step we do with all our partners is analysis of organic data. And what we see on average for gaming vertical is that uh, average retention rate day seven is around 14%, while only 6% of users make first purchase on day seven. It's also crucial for us to analyze average revenue per user and uh, average order value to uh, set up realistic expectations for the campaigns and realistic KPIs. Um, again, it's very important to be data-driven in everything you do with retargeting. When it comes to strategies that are applied in gaming, uh, it's interesting that 60% of uh, marketing budgets for retargeting within our partners are spent for retaining lapsed players inactive for more than seven days. 67% uh, of budget are spent for uh, upsell with active players to generate repurchases, and only 4% of spent uh, is focused on activating non-payers to become a payer. Actually, when it comes to social casino and slots, 90% uh, of uh, their budget is spent on retaining lapsed payers. Uh, so when it comes to KPIs for such campaigns, obviously it's ROAS and incremental ROAS. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> Most of our partners enable VTA and actually it's also important because activating VTA uh, will lead to much better performance um, comparing uh, to having just post-click uh, attributions. Uh, VTA creates more value uh, if more events happen uh, very shortly after the impression and what we see through the data distribution is that uh, most events for uh, gaming campaign and most reopens specifically happen within very first hours after the impression. Again, when it comes to performance results, average conversion rates we see for both uh, segments is around 4%, uh, whereas ROAS uh, is around 36%. 
uh, it's also very important to analyze how your creative work and uh, what creatives perform the best to allocate budgets accordingly. It also can make a difference to retargeting campaign performance. These slides showed some insights on average numbers per vertical for inactive payer segments. And what we see is that uh, the highest CR is shown by simulation genre, whereas when it comes to uh, ROAS Day 7, uh, action games really win the game, followed by simulation and adventures genres. When it comes to active payers, here we also see that when it comes to CR performance, simulation really, really rocks, followed by adventure and sport genres. And uh, best CR for the analyzed period of time is shown by adventure, sports, and racing games. That's it uh, with uh, performance uh, for uh, retargeting campaigns. Uh, actually, before moving to the last part of the presentation, I want to point out that a lot of things can uh, influence retargeting campaign performance, and it's very crucial to take every piece of information, analyze it, and make reasonable actions, alterations to the campaign to reach maximum performance. And taking into account everything that's going on in your game and in external world to make act respectively and make needed changes. Okay. Uh, last thing to mention is uh, what we expect and what we do to prepare for post IDFI era, which is going to start at September. And actually, uh, the first thing that our team uh, did is launched a test with one of our gaming partners to actually get specific numbers of opt in and test different ways of messaging users and this way to check uh, which way is the best to in addressing users to achieve better opt-in rates. Uh, secondly, uh, we are trying to mitigate the influence and again, do our best to improve opt-in numbers. That's why we are working with some other industry players to build dedicated products that are gonna help uh, publishers optimize their opt-in rates and lower number of unidentified users. Uh, we will share details about uh, all these steps really, really soon because everything is in progress, but we're definitely gonna be prepared to uh, <laughs> work under new uh, circumstances. Uh, lastly, uh, very good news is that um, Within the next six months, there are gonna be no changes with Android, but actually uh, actions we do right now to prepare to work with IDFI will be uh, really uh, one step to prepare ourselves for uh, potential changes with Android. Uh, another good news is that actually Apple already adopted pop-up look that's gonna be more user friendly because again the way you approach your users the way you explain them uh, why you need this data what is going to be tracked and what for is key to improving opt-in rates uh, actually we are also really really closely following the trends uh, because uh, some claim that apple pop-up doesn't fit with gdpr rules and some associations are taking actions against the apple and again we are following the trends to be prepared and make the best from the situation uh, that's pretty much it uh, and brings us to q a session thanks uh, a lot for attention for the previous part of the presentation Thank you very much, Nadia, for the great insights and for sharing some great numbers on your presentation. Yeah, I believe uh, we're going to have uh, a high demand uh, for uh, like downloading the slides and for examining uh, them closely. So, um, guys, if you have any questions to Nadia or Addictive Team, go reach out to them on WN Hub or on the email uh, to get more info on how to do retargeting and how to work with this very important matter. Uh, Nadia, if you mind, uh, we have a question which is uh, quite popular uh, for like a retargeting business, uh, which is coming from most of the small developer teams. So um, 
for a not uh, that big developer company, when should we start thinking about having a retargeting partner and doing retargeting itself? Uh, it's uh, crucial to have a significant uh, user base within the app to go on with retargeting initiatives. For most gaming apps, it's reasonable to think about retargeting when you reach uh, 100, 200k monthly active users. Uh, again, everything is uh, really individual and depends on what kind of strategy you want to apply and uh, what are the user segments you want to target because uh, it will uh, vary app from app and it must be analyzed in advance. But on average, you have to reach 100 to 100k monthly active users to start your targeting. Okay, thanks. Great to know. Um, and retargeting is mainly popular for um, those genres where we have high high LTV, where we have high paying players. Um, but what about um, hyper casual? Uh, is there any room for um, uh, hyper casual companies and retargeting companies to cooperate, or um, does it even worth it uh, to reengage uh, your your players on hyper casual games? Uh Again, uh, everything is, must be customized for hyper-casual games for whom it's really easy to and cheap to acquire new users. Uh, they must check everything twice. Uh, nonetheless, for casual hyper-casual games, uh, cross-promo works the best and also retargeting can be used to trigger ad views uh, for these specific games to uh, monetize them through advertising. Thank you. Uh, and we also have a question from Sergei Mokin from uh, Lectures Chats on Dublin Hub platform. And uh, he asks, how do you measure the effectiveness of retargeting campaigns? What metrics are worth looking at? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, to see uh, what you have and what uplift you have from a uh, retargeting campaign, or we always check incrementality. Basically, is a B test that allows you to see uplift in uh, revenue in KPI metrics that you get with retargeting campaigns comparing to non-exposed users. Uh, again, uh, KPI per retargeting campaigns vary in the vast majority of cases. Gaming uh, partners check ROAS day seven, day 30. Uh, it's also possible to ch check uh, CPI, uh, to set CPI goals, to uh, see uh, what it costs to bring back new users to the game. Thank you. And I believe we have one last question also from Sergey. Uh, he asks um, how to create the segmentation of your retargeting audience. Uh, is it use uh, useful to create uh, like small scale or large scale segmentation? Again, uh, you need to connect a specific retargeting offer to different user segments. Uh, and uh, different segments are to be targeted for different retargeting campaign. You can create a segment on your own. Uh, nevertheless, it's better to start with larger segments and narrowing them down through performance. Uh, and this way to uh, to have more optimal performance and better results at the end of the day. Thank you very much uh, for this great knowledge and thanks for sharing the information and stuff. So guys, if you have more questions about retargeting, um, go get in touch with Addictive. They're real experts in this and it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks a lot and have a lovely day. Thank you very much and goodbye.